This is another common midpoint question where they sort of do it in backwards. Um, some line PQ, and you know P is negative 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. And that's P. Some M is 0, 0. And some Q, so that PQ is... M is the midpoint of PQ. I think this is very easy visually because notice how we got from P to Q. We went down 3 and over 4. So let's continue the pattern and go down 3 and over 4. Or over 4 and down 3. So Q would be 4, negative 3. Done and done. Another way you could do it is say, okay, there's some point, I don't know what this midpoint is, but call it x, y, where the, if I add my x and I use the little midpoint formula for the x's and for the y's, I could do negative 4, my x, plus some x that I don't know, divided by 2, equals, it's got to be 0. And then multiply by 2, negative 4 plus x, multiply both sides by 2 and you get 0 and add 4 to the other side x equals 4 or do it with the y's 3 plus what y equals 2 divided by 2 equals our y value of 0 multiply by 2 subtract your 3 and you get y is a negative 3 either way I prefer the first method because it's very logical Last example here. It's going to involve everything we have. Um, vertic vertices are ABC of a triangle. Decide whether it's isosceles, meaning two sides are the same, two congruent sides. Whether it's a right triangle, meaning it'll obey Pythagorean theorem A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we're going to be able to determine if it's two congruent sides by using distance formula. And so I'm going to draw a picture most definitely to get started. One, two, three, four. And B is negative two, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So, is this isosceles? So, we're going to use the distance formula a couple times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to form my right triangles. Just do Pythagorean theorem a couple times because that's really all the distance formula is. Part A distances. So to find AB first, let's find AB. And so that is to get from negative 2 to 4, that's 6. And to get from negative 8 to negative 5, that's 3. So that's 6 squared plus 3 squared. Thirty six plus nine, forty five, square root of forty five, which is um, nine times five, three root five, and BC. To get from negative two to negative eight in the X's. That's a 6. And to get from negative 8 to 4, 8 back up to the x-axis plus another 4 is 12. So we have 6 squared plus 12 squared. Notice if you're using Pythagorean or distance formula, all the negatives cancel out here. You get 36 plus 144. 
180. Square root of 180. I know there's a 9 in there. Um, and 9 would be 9 times 20. But then there's another 4 within there, so there's a 36 in there. 36 times 5, I believe. And so that's 6 root 5. And so we've got 3 root 5 and 6 root 5. And then AC we have to go from negative 8 to 4 we go 12. To go from 4 to negative 5 we go down 9. So 12 squared plus 9 squared 144 plus 81 225 and that's 15. So B is it um, so determine whether it's isosceles it's scalene actually all sides are different. Part B is it a right triangle? Well, it's got to be Pythagorean Theorem. So which one's the biggest side? 6 root 5, that was 180, 225. So 225 is the biggest. And so if it's a right triangle, you can know that it's Pythagorean Theorem or that the slopes are perpendicular. So I'm going to go back to 3 root 5 squared. That's the same thing as 45. And how could you get there? Well, 3 times 3 is 9 times 5 plus 6 root 5 squared. Again, that's the same as the 180. Is that equal to 15 squared to 25? 225, sure enough, is equal to 225, and you get it's a right triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So it's a right triangle. That's a lot of the different problems you can see with midpoint and distance formulas and messing around with it. Best of luck to you guys.